Bangladesh, Bengal country, is located in Southeast Asia, surrounded almost fully by India, except for a small but reasonably sized border with Myanmar or Burma in Southeast. With a land area around 130,000 square kilometers or 50,000 square miles, Bangladesh is smaller than England and Wales combined, or the state of Iowa in USA. But while Britain as a whole has a population of around 67 million, Bangladesh has 100 million more. A population of over 165 million people make Bangladesh the 8th most populated country in the world. However, while the cities are packed, most of the people are found in the villages, Gram Bangla. They are green, spacious and surrounded by acres of farmland and natural beauty. The capital of Bangladesh is Dhaka and is located in the middle of the country. Other major cities are scattered throughout the country and include Chottogram or Chittagong as is also known, Borishal, Khulna, Silet and many more. Currently, Bangladesh is divided into eight divisions or eight regions, Rongpur, Rajshahi, Momishing, Silet, Dhaka, Khulna, Borishal and Chottogram. These are mostly flat and covered in long grass. It's mainly hilly in the east side of the country, especially in Chittagong and Silet. Most Bengalis abroad, including me, are from the Silet division. Bangladesh's flag, the Jatiyo Potaka, has a red circle with a green background. The green represents the lush fertile land of Bangladesh, while the red represents both the sun as well as the blood of those who have sacrificed their lives to create the country. The red circle is a little bit off-center, and the reason behind this is when the flag is hoisted, it looks centered while blowing in the wind. The Jatiyo Potaka was designed by a student, with Shib Narayan Das, a Bengali Hindu, being accredited with designing the original one, which had the country map in the circle, but this was later removed to simplify it. The national anthem of Bangladesh is Amar Shunar Bangla, written by poet Rabindranath Thakur, who won the Nobel Prize for Literature and who also wrote the national anthem for India. The state religion of Bangladesh is Islam. Over 85% of the population are Muslim. However, there is a substantial number of non-Muslims as well, including 10% Hindus, while the remaining are of other faiths, including Buddhism and Christianity. Bangla is the official language of the country. However, there are 46 languages or dialects spoken throughout the country, with 42 of them being native languages. These include Sileti, Rangpuri and Chakma. Bangla is also spoken by the Indians of West Bengal, as such is currently the sixth most spoken language in the world. The national animal of Bangladesh is the Royal Bengal Tiger. The national flower is the Shapla Fool or the Water Lily. The national bird is the Well or the Magpie Robin. And the national sport is Kabaddi, also known as Hadudu. Bangladesh officially came into being just over 50 years ago in 1971. But before then, it had multiple rulers, including Hindus, Mughals, who ruled India between 1526 and 1761. And finally, the British, who ruled British India for nearly 200 years from 1757 to 1947. In modern times, arguably the three of the biggest events in Bangladesh's history took place in 1947, 1952 and 1971. In 1947, the British had partitioned off India into two parts. India and newly formed Pakistan with its Muslim majority. Pakistan was separated into two parts with over 1,300 miles of India in between. The political party which led the creation of Pakistan, the All India Muslim League, were founded in Dhaka. One of its leaders was A.K. Fazlul Haq, a Bengali, who was known affectionately as Shere Bangla, Tiger of Bengal. However, the two wings of Pakistan had very little in common except their religion of Islam. The East Pakistanis struggled to maintain their culture and heritage. In 1948, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the all-powerful leader of Pakistan, 
declared Urdu and Urdu alone as the state language of newly formed Pakistan, even though Bangla was spoken by a majority of the people. Let me make it very clear to you, leave no doubt, that the state language of Pakistan is going to be Urdu and no other language. This caused an uproar. An internal battle commenced between the authorities and the people led by the university students. It was during this time that the Aumilik League party was formed by Maulana Bashani and Hussein Shahid Surawadi and included a young Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. On 21st of February 1952, during a major protest in Dhaka, the police opened fire and killed students and general public. The exact number of dead are not known. It was the first time in world history a people had given their life to protect their language. In 1999, UNESCO declared 21st of February, known as Ekushe February in Bangla, as International Mother Language Day in recognition of Bangladesh's effort. The late Rafiqul Islam, a Bengali who lived in Canada, drove this effort for UN recognition. Very soon, the Bengalis discovered that Pakistan was not what they dreamed of. They felt that the British colonization was replaced by Pakistani colonization. In December 1970, a perfectly legal general election win was denied to the Army League. Pakistan, Bengal and West Pakistan, the, in between the Indian territory of 1500 miles. And actually as the labor mobility between the East and West, as the central government machineries are there in, in West Pakistan, as um, central administration in the hands of West Pakistani, as the military installations and the military persons are come from West Pakistan, only, only 10 percent from Bengal, in the armed forces, in the 15 percent in the central administration. Naturally, these 23 years you have seen that East Pakistan, particularly the Bengal, is nothing but a colonial market. If you want to save that and give a equal right as a Pakistani, then you have to give Bengal their right to live. And they must be must master of their own resources because they have been exploited for long, long 23 years. It cannot be tolerated anymore. This was the last straw for the East Pakistanis. On 7th March 1971, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman gave a powerful and fiery speech in Paltim Madan, Dhaka, seeking greater autonomy of the people. কিন্তু দুঃখের বিষয় আজ ঢাকা চট্টগ্রাম খুলনা রাজশাহী রংপুরে আমার ভাইয়ের রক্তের আস্পদ রঞ্জিত হয়েছে আজ বাংলার মানুষ মুক্তি চায় বাংলার মানুষ বাঁচতে চায় বাংলার মানুষ তারা আজ তার অধিকার চায় আমার তোমরা <laughs> মনে রাখবা 
রক্ত যখন দিয়েছি রক্ত আরো দেব এ দেশের মানুষকে মুক্ত করে ছাড়ব ইনশাল্লাহ এবারে সংগ্রাম আমাদের মুক্তির সংগ্রাম এবারে সংগ্রাম স্বাধীনতার সংগ্রাম In the meantime, Pakistani army was slowly preparing for war. On the early hours of 26 March 1971, Pakistani army attacked the Bengalis and took Sheikh Mujibur Rahman as prisoner. And with that, the Bengalis declared independence and Bangladesh was born. I, Mr. Zia Rahman, do hereby declare the independence of Bangladesh. Finally, on 16 December 1971, after a nine-month war campaign, led politically by Tajuddin Ahmed and militarily by Colonel Muhammad Ataul Bani Usmani, victory was achieved by the Bengalis with the help of the Indians. But it came at a cost. According to the government of Bangladesh, three million people had died to free the country. Post liberation the war torn country went through a period of turbulence in 1975 four years after bangladesh gained independence the father of the nation the jatir jonok sheikh mujibur rahman known affectionately as bonga bondu friend of bengal he and his family were murdered in cold blood by young army officers and three months later tajuddin ahmed and three other senior leaders of the liberation war were killed in prison Shortly after Jaur Rahman a young army major who fought gallantly during the liberation war took over Jaur Rahman went to create Bangladesh's second major political party Bangladesh Nationalist Party known as BNP but he too was assassinated in 1981 Today Bangladesh political scene is still dominated by Awami League and BNP Awami League is led by Sheikh Mujibur's daughter Sheikh Hasina while BNP is led by Jaur Rahman's wife Khalida Jia It's very rare among world politics to have two female leaders for over 30 years since 1991 is these two ladies who are the most powerful people in the whole country The currency of Bangladesh is taka 1 pound is approximately 100 taka Bangladesh's economy was one time ranked one of the worst in the world but today the country has developed so much that it's considered to be one of the next 11 or N11 which is a list of 11 fastest growing countries which has the potential to become the world's largest economies in the 21st century along with Brazil, Russia, India and China. Bangladesh's economy is mainly dependent upon agriculture and manufacturing. If you look at your clothes label the chances are it will say made in Bangladesh. Now let's go over here and have a look at this trouser. What does it say? Made in Bangladesh. <laughs> Bangladesh is a country of rivers. It has around 700 rivers mainly flowing south. The three of the biggest rivers are Podda which is the name of the Ganges when it enters Bangladesh from India, Jamuna or the Brahmaputra in India, and Meghna. Water is Bangladesh's blessing and curse. It makes the land lush green and one of the most fertile in the world, but also brings devastation in the form of flooding and cyclone pretty much every year. Weather-wise, Bangladesh is hot and dry most of the year. The winter temperatures tend to be around 15 Celsius, while the summer monsoon can be extremely hot hitting temperatures upwards of 40 celsius rice and curry is the main diet of bangladesh people eating a lot of fish chicken beef and vegetables and as per the islamic tradition they use their right hand not knives and forks to eat the food bengalis are crazy about sport Football, badminton and cricket are three of the most popular. They are ranked in the top 10 best cricket team in the world and the football fans are usually divided between die-hard Argentina and Brazil fans while England and Germany also have a large following. 
in terms of transport people drive on the left lane and use rickshaws cng buses and boats to travel around the country Bangladesh is famous for having world's largest delta, the Ganges Delta. The deltas are wetlands which are formed when river drops what they carry when they meet another water, such as another river or sea for example. Bangladesh also has the largest mangrove ecosystem in the world, the Sundarbon, which is also partly located in India in West Bengal. It also has the longest unbroken beach in the world in Cox's Bazar located in Chittagong. But throughout the world the Bengalis are famous for their curries. The Indian restaurants and Indian takeaways are actually Bengali. Because Bangladesh was part of India when the Bengalis moved abroad, they used the term Indian rather than Bengali. As such the name has stuck even to the vast majority of takeaways and restaurants abroad. are owned by bengalis next time you go to your local for a curry ask them where the family is originally from good chance they'll say it's bangladesh bangladesh also has three unesco world heritage site including a 7th century buddhist monastery famous bengali include begum rukeya who campaigned for greater freedom and education of females National poet Kadir Nazrul Islam, philanthropist Muhammad Yunus who won the Nobel Peace Prize, cricketer Shakibul Al Hasan who was one time ranked number one best all rounder in world cricket, and Jawed Karim, one of the founders of YouTube, whose father is Bengali and mother is German. Assalamu alaikum, hello everyone. Hope you guys are well. Um, it's been a tough two years with the corona pandemic for all of us. Um, it's been really difficult both on physically and on a physical and an emotional level. So I hope you and your loved one are in good health and doing okay. You know, God willing, we'll get through this. You know, very very quickly. Um, secondly, I do want to thank everyone whose photos and videos I've used um, throughout the making of this video. So I will leave the credits at the end. So thank you for allowing me to use all that. Um yeah regarding my background I was born on 6th of February 1980 today is my 42nd birthday um yeah I was born in a village of Sharfara in the Silet division um but I grew up in the nearby village of Sweetful in my mother's village um that's where I spent my childhood early years of my childhood and then in 1987 I came to UK and with my family initially lived in Swindon for a few years and then moved to Liverpool um in 1991 so i've been living in liverpool for the last uh, 30 year odd years and during that time i've gone through university um and then graduated in computer science and management and then became a professional web designer so that's what i do in my full time all these other things that i do including these videos are just in my past time um just they're just a labor of love that's all they are um so during the 35 years that i've lived in uk i have been to bangladesh Um, I've been back to Bangladesh only three separate occasions, though. This hasn't been that long, and there's always been a gap of like a years, ten years, and another four years, etc. And uh, every time I've gone back, it's always been to the Silat division and only to my mother's village and the odd occasion to my father's village. So yeah, I've not, to be honest, I've not had a chance to see the country, and it's always been a childhood dream, you know, to see the country. But you know what life is like, you know, life comes and just time goes so fast and. You know, life has a way of keeping you busy with useless crap a lot of the time, doesn't it? And uh, the things that you really want to do, um, the people that you really want to be around, you know, we don't really sp you know, spend much time with them. So I decided that this year, that uh, when I do go back to Bangladesh for a holiday, that I'm gonna have, I'm gonna see the whole country. And um, one thing I wanted to do was to take you through this journey myself, um, simply because of the fact that there are so many amazing bloggers. in Bangladesh uh, who are doing in the Bengali language uh, but unfortunately because you know I grew up in this country from a very young age 
Uh, my Bangla is very, very poor. Um, I only speak in the Sileti um, dialect. Um, I don't really speak in the formal, you know, the Dahai, lang Dahai uh, uh, formal language, you know, um, as, we, as we call it. Um, yeah, so um, I thought, you know what, it would be lovely to go back to Bangladesh and um, show you guys everything that I see and learn uh, and take you through my journey as well in the hope that um, especially the Bengalis who are like myself who are born and brought up abroad or, or, or born abroad and never had an opportunity to see Bangladesh or don't know much about it um, it's an opportunity for you to discover the country and make your own connection um, a lot of the time when, I, when we think about Bangladesh there's always at least for my generation there's always been a bit of a pressure you know you go back to Bangladesh for a serious reason you know whether to get married uh, whether to invest in the country um, you know it's also it's always something um, quite you know dramatic and deep um, it's never like oh let's just go let's just chill out go and, go and explore the country you know very rarely you know was it like that um, obviously times are changing attitudes are changing there are people now who are taking their children um, just for sightseeing alone rather than anything deep and serious um, yeah, so what I wanted to do is for my generation of people um, who've not had an opportunity to explore is to see the country, to discover a lot more and make our own connections. You know, um, let's take away all this drama that goes with it and have an opportunity to show it properly. And um, I will say to the people, um, uh, to, I will say beforehand that obviously I will be speaking mainly in English and the Bengali dialect I'll be using is Sileti. Um, unfortunately, like I said, my uh, former Bangla is not that good. But I will tell you that 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 I will tell you But in the meantime, you'll have to stick with my Sileti dialect and uh, forgive me. But the war in Amin is as on Sileti, so Amarda, you know, Sileti Basha and Chilik Basha Mate Ku, better go with the Kor in a Harvard. You can now with Amin show me that in a Sileti Mate, Sileti Mate Tom like the easy you. But Chester Hormude, obviously, is a ton for Ibanga, the Shuka Shutu Basha, like it, Jemutu, you know, Shamne, the Arab, both Manisham and Bidota, the Tavarwa, Beshebag and Bangladesh. But inshallah, you know, I will take you through the journey, but have a little bit of patience, um, simply because of the fact that. You know, the internet connection in Bangladesh is not that great. And also because I am going after a seven years gap now as well. I do want to enjoy the country for myself. Um, a lot of us who do blogging, um, you know, can vouch for the fact that, you know, the whole editing process, recording, we get a little bit obsessed by it and it can be very, very time consuming. And uh, yeah, so one thing I want to do when I go there is to enjoy it. Because I, again, like every blogger out there, become obsessed with recording everything. And then, you know, you're not enjoying it for yourself. You've seen everything through a lens. And, you know, God has given us this beautiful sight. Uh, and, and, you know, he's given a heart and a mind, you know, to take everything in. But we're also always obsessed with recording it for everyone else. And that, you know, that moment is so lost for ourselves. So there are going to be occasions where I don't record things. Um, I'll keep it for myself. Um, but obviously I'm going there with the intention of um, showcasing Bangladesh, the beautiful side of Bangladesh, you know, the amazing rich culture and history that it has to the international world. So I'll try my best. Um, but yeah, please have a little bit of patience because like I said, I won't have access to internet all the time. You know, it, it is going to be a little bit slow. And, uh, and also because I'm a, I've got a bit of OCD when it comes to presentation and trying to do as perfect as possible. Um, I will be spending a lot of time, you know, editing the video, so I may not be able to release it as fast as I like. But inshallah, wish me luck, um, pray for me, I mean, I do need it. Um, obviously, I'm super, super excited about going and super excited to show you guys um, Bangladesh itself. And uh, yeah, look forward to going through this journey ourselves and uh, yeah, stay well, stay healthy and uh, Let's get on the road. Yeah, take care. Allah Hafiz.